Well, joining me now is author and historian Tessa Dunlop, by the author of the Palace Papers, Tina Brown, in America, and by royal historian and author of a new book, After Elizabeth, Can the Monarchy Save Itself? Ed Owens, welcome to all three of you. Tina, let me start with you. Very much the queen of royal experts, in my opinion. So what is the queen of royal experts' view? As we, incredibly, it's a year tomorrow. I can remember every moment of that day. Um, but it's a year tomorrow that we lost uh, Elizabeth II. I do, I do feel a lot of the magic died with the Queen of the monarchy. What do they do about this? Well, you know, I actually think that Charles has actually gripped it in a way that's very surprising, actually. I, I wouldn't really agree that it's all gone away and all drained away. I think that in a strange way, the chaos that you vividly describe at the top of the show has actually made Charles look a lot better. He's suddenly the great statesman on the world stage. He's the most august statesman that England can really put out there. He's become a huge national asset. And he really hasn't put a foot wrong in the last year. I agree. And that has actually, I think, sort of surprised everybody. So that's good. And you've got the sparkle coming out of Kate and William. So I think there's not a bad double act of, of Charles being the kind of august grandfather of the country and sparkle, sparkle from William and Kate. Here's the problem. I don't think it's quite as dire. Well, here's why I think it may be a little more dire than you think. It may be not as dire as the picture I painted. I'm certainly a massive fan of King Charles and Queen Camilla. I think they're fantastic and done a great job, I think, stabilising things after what was a very unstable period. But young people in particular, according to all the polls at the moment, 37% uh, of 18 to 24-year-olds want the monarchy to continue. 40% want an elected head of state. Only 30% think the royal family is good value for money. These are worrying numbers for the royals. And it seems to me that when I talk to young people, they all had great reverence and, I think, interest in the Queen, but they're not so reverential or interested in the others at the moment. It's not irretrievable, but at the moment, I think there's a kind of malaise... Well, you know, I have to say that if you'd ask people, young people in the 1960s, if they had a great reverence for the Queen, they would have absolutely thought she was a complete bore. You know, I mean, when you had all those irreverent shows like That Was The Week That Was, that was a period where the Queen was very much out of fashion. She was considered irrelevant. I don't think that if you had polling at that time with all the young people at that, at that moment, they would have particularly thought the Queen was this fabulous icon that she became. In a strange way, the last 20 years of the Queen's life sort of was the most iconic time for her. I would actually argue that uh, Stephen Frears film The Queen, where, with Helen mm. Mirren, was the beginning of a kind of pop culture embrace mm. of the Queen, where she went from being someone irrelevant to young people to suddenly being almost like a sort of hip pop culture mm. icon. And you had the thing with the, uh, her wonderful appearance at the Olympics, and you had then she was with Paddington Bear, and all of a sudden the Queen was kind of co-opted by, by pop culture, and she, in her brilliant way, embraced it. But I'm yeah. not sure that you would have found young people thinking she was so fabulous when she was in her 50s. Interesting point. All right, Tessa, you've been gagging to get in here. As always. Um, I mean, I, I think there are a lot of distractions going on at the moment. You've got the Harry and Meghan thing. You've got the Prince Andrew scandal still bubbling away. We're apparently not going to see the files on him now for some huge amount of time for reasons that completely baffle me. Um, you've got... Uh, problems, I think, for Charles in what kind of monarchy he wants to present to the world. What's he going to change? Um, and you've got William and Kate, who I think are doing a great job. Um, but... Come on, Pete. Numbers... Even you agreed with me that there was a ball drop around the Women's World Cup. That, that was, was a mistake. A, a clear way he could have got some headway with young people. William should have... Listen, I've, I've made it very clear. William should have got on the first plane out to that World Cup final and watched the Lionesses. That, that, he's a president of the FA, for goodness sake. It was ridiculous. But actually, that spoke to a deeper stubbornness and, dare I say, entitlement. And you put, once again, if I may, you put all the blame on little, pretty irrelevant in some respects, Harry, when if... What about all the blame on him? But, uh, but that that thesis lot, at the top, and I took notes on it. Please. I put a I lot of... Extensive notes I put a lot pieces. of blame on those A lot two. of blame. Because they're, Actually, the only, they're the only two members of the royal family who have done what but, they've been doing. But I'm doing. sure, Ed, your academic, will agree with me that the, the broad-shouldered... It should be, anyway, the broad-shouldered institution of monarchy. Mm. That has to be where change comes from, whether it is the redemptive olive branch 
offered to Harry. It needs to come from his father, from his brother, who are part of an institution of state, not from a prince who wears a beanie and goes around you know, Europe doing uh, well-meaning charity gigs. No, it needs to come from the, the institution of monarchy and actually deeper change. You mentioned their mm. transparency, access to files, freedom of information. That needs to come from the monarchy. Mm. They need to lead. You're right. Call out the politi politicians. They're rotten. We need to see leadership from Charles. Ed, you wrote a piece about all this, uh, pretty much affirming uh, that there is a rut in the royal family. Like I said, I don't think it's irretrievable, but I do sense it. I do sense there's been a kind of down, downturn, if you like. But we've been through these before and they've bounced back. But what, where do you think we are with the royal family and the institution of the monarchy? And do you see a way that they can get things back on track? Well, actually, uh, Piers, I think, you're, I think you're right. There is something of a rut here. Uh, and I, I have to briefly and respectfully take issue with something that Tina said before. The opinion polls in the 1960s that were taken, there weren't many of them, but when young people were asked, more than 60% said that the, the Queen represented the best of British. Uh, and I think that was really significant. You know, we've only got to go back 10 years to 2013, and 72% of young people were saying uh, that the monarchy would continue, that they supported it, um, and that it was here to stay. Fast forward 10 years, and things have def definitely changed. And I think uh, the news and hubbub around Andrew and more recently uh, Harry and Meghan are partly to do with it. Mm. But I think there's something bigger here as well. I think there is a significant generational divide over the monarchy, just as there is a significant, significant general divide in society more generally mm. regarding the state of the nation. Young people, under 45s especially, and most acutely the under 25s, are totally disenchanted with the state of modern Britain. And I think the monarchy as a symbol at the heart of the country is taking a lot of flack. Yeah, I, I think that's right. Uh, Tina, Harry and Meghan, I don't particularly like talking about them anymore. I think it's become a, you know, it's just a relentless kind of Groundhog Day thing, really. They want attention. They want to make money out of their royal titles. Every time they rear their heads to do it, everyone I hear goes nuts, including me, and then we carry on repeat cycle. Um, what is going on with them in America, though? I mean, what is their reputation like there now? How relevant are they? We're hearing that Meghan's planning her big comeback, et cetera, et cetera. But where are they over there? OK, well, first of all, just to say, uh, to Tessa's point, I completely agree about William blowing it with the lionesses, but mm. that's where I missed Harry, actually. That's where they yes. missed Harry. You're because, you know, right if, Harry, if Harry'd been part of the mix... You know, Harry could have gone to the Lionesses. Wouldn't he have been fabulous? Let's face it. Whatever you well, think hang on. about okay. Harry, I he would, say, would have been fabulous. I would say to that, why didn't he? Oh, that would have been really cool. Well, I think he Sorry. To He's undercut his brother. Nothing, like nothing was stopping him getting on a plane if he wanted to, and he didn't. So he could have done. But he yeah. wasn't the president so, of the FA. He, that's, he probably that's offside. No, no. That, William, that, William, that is no, no. offside. That William point. should have gone as president of the FA. That was his duty to do that, right. and it was a very rare very bad misstep by him to but not do that. And it also, actually, if you're a woman player for the England team, I mean, how fast would he have got on a plane if that had been the England men's team in the World Cup final? He'd have been like a greyhound on speed. So, I, but, but, but Harry could have gone if he wanted to, and he didn't. But anyway, back, back to the bigger picture of well, Harry and Meghan okay. in America. Is okay, this brand picture, working? Big... Well, I tell you, what is interesting is the fact that Meghan's old show, 12 years old, Suits, is actually the number one show at the moment in America. Nobody understands why. Somebody posted a meme on TikTok and the whole thing exploded. And suddenly Suits, this old show, is the, first, is the best viewed show on Netflix yeah. worldwide. Go figure. Nobody knows. Mm. And it's not really thought it's necessarily anything to do with Meghan. But it is an interesting thing. Well, it's, it's actually a very, I've got to say, brand. it's a very good show. I really liked Suits. <laughs> so I it doesn't surprise too. me. I thought it was great, but why it's suddenly been dug out of the sort of I know TikTok it's weird. It's weird. I don't yeah. know. But it's not uh, weird, it, is it? it? It's, it's because weird. they've got the X factor, which is why we find it painful when they left. It was so painful. Well, it may, as it Tina said, it's not necessarily yeah. because of Meghan Markle. But let me, Tina, to the wider point no, about how popular but, but they are, anyhow, what do you think? The, the wider point is, well, just to say though that in that instance, uh, Hollywood agents I speak to kind of say, actually, the weird thing is, if Meghan wanted to go and make an acting deal right now, she could probably crush it and get a great acting deal. But mm. I don't think that's what she's looking for because acting is now way too much hard work. Basically, they're 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 a non they're a non-factor here. Actually, I mean, 
in Hollywood, nobody talks about them at all, I'm mm. told. But they just, they're just, you know, the, the whole celebrity canvas is so much bigger, wider and hotter. They're not really a factor. They're just, they're, they're just minors who show up at celebrity events mm. and so on. So there's nothing really going on with their brand uh, here. And I think that they've really got to figure out, obviously, they have taken advice finally and gone quiet, which is exactly what they should have done. Like, shut up, like, go away. Mm. And they have gone away for the entire summer. But they've got to figure out what Archwell is. You're like, what's it for? Mm. You know, what is what is it actually for? They haven't raised very much money with it, to be honest. I mean, I think it's twelve or thirty million dollars or something. You'd think by now it would be a hundred million dollar foundation. The problem they've it, got, it is Tina, really the problem not they've raising got, money. The problem they've got is they actually the only currency they have so far that has proved remotely interesting to the public is when they're trashing their families. But, and I think I find that pathetic and sad. And it's caused unbelievable rifts, not just with his family, with her family. The poor father sitting there 50 miles away has never met his grandchildren. He's never met the person that married his daughter, despite bringing up Meghan on his own for years. You know, all of it is just incredibly, on a human family level, incredibly sad. Uh, and, I, you know, they keep talking about how happy they are over there. How happy could anybody be if you're estranged from both of your families. I mean, I just don't know. But, but what you've How can you be happy? There is their vulnerability, and I agree, there is a vulnerability, because they're outside the institution. But I, I don't know what Ed and Tina feel about this, but that's why I believe that the rapprochement, the olive leaf, the move towards making, they're never going to be a happy family again, but some kind of redemptive move, it has to come from the king. Yeah, but hang on, hang on. He's made efforts to do this. The problem is they don't trust Harry anymore. They believe he's going to be taping them, well, recording them, making notes, doing stuff for future deals. But if you deals. say something kind and loving, does it matter if you're taped? He's like tried, my son. I am, told Char going? I am told Charles has tried multiple times to do this. But Harry wants them to apologise to him for, for the damage he's been wreaking look, on the look, royal look, family. Because the, the problem monarchy. is young people saw... Some let, kind let, of let, let, let's, face, let's face it, though, I mean... It is not in Meghan's interest to have a rapprochement between Harry and his family. No. That's why I don't think it'll happen, because no. Meghan does not want to live in England ever again. Nope. She feels that England was just, uh, uh, you know, rejected her. It, she rejects it. Mm. Uh, she finds it cold, boring, nothing for her. She loves... Her, you know, the Hollywood he apparently scene. said tonight... That's where she wants to be. Yeah, he apparently said tonight in his speech at this charity uh, event that his wife was really sorry she couldn't be there. That's complete nonsense. She's not sorry she can't be there. She was at two Beyoncé concerts last week. If she wanted to be there, she'd be there. Um, she doesn't want to be there for the reasons Tina said. She she got to, I've got to be she she out of time. He saw hope there. in them, and then the hope got taken away, and that's why yeah. the world... You know what? If you trash your family in public in the way that they've done for so long eventually any family would go, that's it. Drawbridge down, done. And that's sadly where we are. Incredible that he's here, Harry, so and he's not going to see his we're, brother we're, or his father. I'm just holding up Ed's well, book. Which the, only thing I will say, the, the, the only thing I will say about that is this, this family has never been a touchy-feely family. I mean, you know, they never rush to family reunions except at Christmas, Easter. You know, this is not a family that is all over each other yeah. at the best of times. Yeah. And quite obviously... Harry's completely alienated his family, and it's done. I, I don't quite understand why, John, you know, English coverage is constantly about, and he comes to England and he hasn't seen his family. Yeah. No, they're estranged. No, no, <laughs> they're I agree. Not going I, to listen, see Tina. Other. No one's going to rush I, to see I each totally other. agree. We've got to leave it there. Tina Brown, lovely to see you. Uh, great to see you, Tessa. Ed Owens, after Elizabeth, can the monarchy save itself? Actually, a really interesting book about the future of our monarchy here. Does it have a future? How Thank long you, is that future? I hope it does. I think it will, but work to be done by King Charles. He's doing a great job, but work to be done in reshaping now the monarchy in his image for what he wants for us and the country. Uh, great to see you all. Thank you very much indeed.